Well, uh, hello everyone. How are you doing tonight? Uh, or this morning, or this evening, or whatever time it is, wherever you happen to be. My name is Guy Royce, and uh, this is my humble stream. I, uh, tonight, am working on the Evercraft Kata. This is a Kata that my friend George Walters and I uh, created, I don't know, about a decade ago. And the idea is, is we're going to code up this, you know, the, the brains for a, uh, a, a multi, uh, massive multiplayer online RPG called Evercraft which was, you know, a, a little fun portmanteau of EverQuest and uh, World of Warcraft. Um, and uh, I've been working on this for a couple of streams, and I'm not bored with it yet, and hopefully you aren't bored with it yet either. But um, it's, it's refactoring time in this exercise. Um, I've got this hero class. The hero class, as it turns out, as heroes often do, has become a bit of a god class. And so I need to pull it apart. Uh, right now, in the exercise itself, we are at, uh, we are in what we called Iteration 2, Classes. I have created a fighter, so it does fighter things. And I've got everything on a rogue except for adds dexter or ignores an opponent's dexterity modifier if positive to armor class when attacking. And so, uh, I haven't done that bit yet because it's complicated, and I'm looking at my code, and it's just get getting kind of uh, kind of long. Uh, this, this hero has just got a lot going on in it. Uh, I mean, I, I've tried to make these little one-line things and stuff, but it's just got too much going on. And so, I'm going to try and fix that. And I've got a plan, and I'm not sure if it's a good plan or if it's a bad plan, but it's a plan uh, on how I'm going to do this. And, and something I discussed at the end of my last stream on Monday, um, which was to uh, sort of take these things, like the level and the experience and the alignment, and create a little classes so that we can decompose uh, the behavior here. And so, you know, for example, you could have an alignment class and this get and set alignment will just delegate to that class. And um, that delegation then will validate the alignment and tell you if you can't set it to that or not. But uh, as far as anyone using the hero is concerned, you just get and set the alignment. So that's kind of the idea. Uh, so that's what I'm going to try. Um, and I've got a whole bunch of passing tests, so this should be a pretty safe refactor. Uh, but we'll see, right? <laughs> so, sound good to everyone? Uh, by the way, if I keep looking right, it's not because uh, it, it, my chat window is over here, so I'm, I want to make sure if anyone's saying anything that I see it. I don't have it conveniently on the same screen that you all are watching. So, um, yeah, well, let's get started. Uh, actually, I'm going to take a look and see who all's in chat first. We've got, uh, um, it looks like, a couple of bots and a couple of uh, users I don't recognize, uh, but uh, radial symmetry and uh, some matter. So uh, welcome to the stream. Uh, I know another TV viewer's a bot. I know Nightbot's a bot because I put it there. And me. So cool, cool, cool. Okay. So I'm going to do this with level first because, I, I mean, I can do this with name, but name is, quite frankly, not terribly interesting because it's just a string. Uh, and so it'd be a really simple case, but it wouldn't do anything particularly interesting. So I'm going to start with the level, because level actually uh, does two things that are interesting. One, it actually has a computation, right? Or we're doing some, a calculation here. And it also references the, uh, the current hero's experience points. Oh, hey, uh, hey, Chad, how's it going? Uh, my day's been going okay. Um, not as productive as I would have hoped, but, you know, hey, you know. He, uh, well, I was productive. I just had two unrealistic expectations of how much I could get done in a day, which is typical. So, um, so yeah, let's, uh, let's try and create a level class. I, I think that's what I want to do. And so, uh, up here we would go ahead. Uh, and what I like about this pattern, aside from its composition and not inheritance, is that I'm kind of doing it already with ability, right? So I got my strength, my dex, my con, and there, there's an ability class that, that wraps up that idea. And so doing that for level doesn't feel unnatural. So I'm going to go ahead and, and put a line of code in here that won't work called const level equals require dot slash level <laughs> for the productivity myth the, the, uh, is it the mythical uh the mythical guy month yeah <laughs> uh, so that's not going to work because a uh, level doesn't exist so we got level dot js and uh, we're just going to go ahead and Snarf a little bit of code here because I just don't feel like typing that. 
and then module.exports equals hero. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, so now it's happy again because there's something to uh, export. That shouldn't be hero, though. That should be level. So let's change that to level. And in order for this to work, um, in here we'll have a this dot underscore level equals new level. And uh, unfortunately, um, level needs to access the character, the hero. So we're going to set up a circular reference, which is fine uh, in the way that we're doing it. JavaScript's garbage collection handled. This is not going to bite us in the ass or anything. Uh, but we create a new uh, level. And then we'll take the level here and we'll That'll take the hero as an input argument, and this dot hero, this dot underscore hero equals hero. And then we can just ask it for the level. So we'll have a level function. And what does the hero level function do? It returns math dot returns this calculation right here. So return math.floor this dot experience points. This would not be this, this would be this dot hero dot experience points uh, divided by XP per level plus one. And XP per level is right here. Let's copy that first. We can put that up here. I kind of like this because now my constants are nearer to the code that it cares about them. So I think that's a good thing. Okay, this is still passing. Now uh, I just need to swap out this code to say return this dot underscore level dot level. And that should still work. It does not. Um, why not? Uh, this dot underscore level dot level. Let's look at my level implementation. Oh, I made it a function, not a getter. There we go. Now it passes. So that, that was actually a fairly painless refactor. Um, and now I've got sort of this, this level thing. Um, yeah, I think I like this. Um, what do we want to do next? Uh, let's get rid of our dead code. Uh, we got dead code here. I think that's probably it, actually. Um, yeah, 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 see, yeah, I like this. Um, that's that's nice and tidy. I can I could actually write a separate right right now. We're testing level through the hero, and I think that's fine. But we could test these individually and then just test the interaction, which could be useful for some of the more complicated scenarios. Although the way they, they loop back the, the way we pass the hero in is such that maybe that's not such a good idea. I think we should probably stick with the test through hero for now. So let's do, um, let's do, uh, let's do experience points. Experience points will be interesting because it's just returning a value, but um, there's also this add experience uh, function down here uh, that uh, needs to keep track of whether you're adding experience points or not. Um, it's not terribly complicated. Uh, I wonder if we could combine it with level, um, since they are a very related concept. Um, I don't know. I don't know if I like that or not, because in some ways these feel like I, I've taken my primitives and turned them into like domain objects. Like they, they have it's it's an integer with context as opposed to being just an integer. Um, let's. Um, and, and by combining them together, it's it's a little, I don't know, it doesn't feel quite the same. However, experience points are directly what gives you the level. So I'm, I'm kind of, I'm, I'm of two minds about it. And this is actually a really simplistic class. And so adding um, XP to this, I don't think would be that big of a deal. Um, let's try it. We'll, we'll see what happens. If we don't like it, we'll, we'll uh, revert it, uh, which means I should probably commit. Um, I'm not going to push though. Get status. Get status helps you type status right. 
Um, uh, git add dot git commit dash m extracted level to helper. Uh, not helper. I, I hate helper class. It's like the word server. Helper doesn't mean anything. It doesn't tell me enough. It's um, uh, it's a uh, uh, it's a. I mean, we're composing. We're doing composition here. So this would be. It's, it's not a composite. Composite would be all the things together. Uh, composed. No. Ah, class. Close enough. There we go. Okay, so now I'm going to rename this level and experience because it's kind of doing a little bit more now. And uh, let's rename the file to the level and experience. I could go level and XP, I suppose. Um, and in here we'll bring in level and experience. And uh, yeah, I already changed the name for me. Thank you, uh, Visual Studio Code. Um, and so we'll have, uh, this guy now has this property here. This is where we keep track of the XP. So we, we need uh, to keep track of that inside of this class now, inside of this instance. Um, and then we need uh, this to be this dot level. Dot uh, experience. I'm we'll call it experience points. Uh, this would be level and experience. Got to give it the right name. We shouldn't need this anymore. Um, I can't see my tests failing. They should be totally blowing up. Oh, hi, hi, Simon. How's it going? Good to see you. Another late night with guy coding Evercraft day. <laughs> So uh, just um, oh you you weren't at the end of the, my stream uh, last week on, on Evercraft uh, Simon but uh, I'm, I'm I tried a pattern I didn't like it I stopped and thought about it more uh, today and I'm trying it again and I'm liking it better so um, yeah that's where we're at today um, so we got this level and experience thingy here and we, we see the level we get the experience we ask that for the experience points and then we have add experience down here. And I'm going to move this. Nah, I'm not going to move it up. I was thinking about it, but it doesn't matter where it's at that much. Call this level dot add experience amount. Actually, I don't want to do that yet because I need to copy this code. This code goes in level and experience. <laughs> been been hot. It's actually really hot here in the U.S. too. Well, at least to the part I'm in, and not all of it. <laughs> Although I, I hear that people in Arizona are miserable all the time. But um, hey, Brendonius, how's it going? We will call add experience here, and we'll uh, we want to get experience points. Started refactoring the uh, hero before I started moving the code over to uh, the level and experience helper class. So uh, I, I probably shouldn't have done that. Uh, and this is going to be return this dot underscore XP. And that's not that's not passy happy yet, but we'll get it there. This dot underscore level dot add experience amount. So it's just delegating. And those all pass. Uh, and so when we ask for the experience points, we ask the, yeah, yeah, this works. Cool. Um, I think I want to rename this to be uh, level and XP. And I just didn't rename it everywhere, did I? Or did I? Oh, no, I got it. Good. Yeah, it's a dry heat. Yeah, so is an oven, right? <laughs> now, I'll tell you, Arizona in, in like February, oh my God, it was like the most wonderful place in the world. It's like, gets down to that nice, you know, that cool, you know, that cool morning, the crisp morning when you, you get up from camping and it's just like it's in the 50s 
it's like in the low 50s and it's crisp and it's kind of bracing but it wakes you up and it's it's really pleasant and that's what it's like at night and then during the day it's like high of 75 high you know oh it's gorgeous gorgeous <laughs> um you're just lurking and not watching the implementation <laughs> Oh, yeah, that's right. You guys don't do AC in the UK. And so when it's hot, you're just hot. Yeah. Well, you know, I know that's like I, I, when I was growing up, we didn't have air conditioning. And, uh, you know, I just had a fan and a window and an upstairs bedroom. And it was a, it was a it was a toss up for me because I could open the window and then it would let air in. But we had this uh, this uh, I don't know. What do you call it? Basset hound or it was a coon dog. That's what it was. Uh, that would be out back and it would just bark all night long. And, and so I had the choice between hearing the dog all night or being hot. And so, uh, sometimes I could just turn the music up and it was fine. And sometimes, yeah, anyhow, that dog killed my pet rabbit too. I didn't like that dog very much. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, you're right, Simon. An AC for you know a couple weeks a year isn't worth it at all. Well, I imagine you probably have it for like commercial buildings and stuff like that, where ventilation is a bigger deal and they're big and they don't have old windows, like you know office towers and that kind of stuff. Uh, that helps a lot, actually. We've been doing that as well. We just had two big trees removed from our yard, and um, so we're getting a lot more sun, and so we've been keeping the 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 um, the, the drapes pulled shut. So. But, you know, it, it gets hot, and uh, people in uh, warmer places deal with uh, deal with it, so. <laughs> uh, replace the trees? Not yet. Um, it's on my list. Don't worry, Brendan. I, I, uh, I want to plant another tree where the other one was at, uh, but it's going to be a couple of years because I need to get the yard restored because there's, like, a bunch of buried roots that need to decay and a bunch of big pile of chips, and so I just need to get some yard first. Um, so that'll be a couple of years before I replace them. <laughs> uh, uh, camped out in the server room. That's a great idea. Um, let's take a look here. So we got this level and experience thing. I, I, I I'm kind of digging how this works. We'll, we'll see if this is a good plan long term. But this feels good. Um, let's take a look at we got abilities here. We got class and alignments. We got armor class. Armor class is a good candidate. Hit points. Um, let's do hit points because hit points has sort of a, a natural grouping here of hit points, current hit points, is alive. Um, because we could kind of, you know, if we do this, they logically group. So let's do hit points. New file, hit points.js. We will take our super imaginative code from uh, level and experience and copy it into hit points. Get rid of that constant. Call this hit points. Pass in the hero. And then none of those. Okay, and we'll go back to hero. We'll bring in const hit points. Let's require dot slash hit points. There we go. So far, so good. I'll go ahead and say this dot underscore hit points equals new hit points. Pass in this. And now we can start migrating the functionality that's in here over to the hit points class. So we've got hit points, current hit points, and is alive. So we'll copy that over there. So if we get the hit points, it will do this computation. And if we get the current hit points, it will do this computation. And here's our calculation for is alive.
Yeah, I did have a very small number of files. Well, this, you're, you're right, Simon. The the, uh, the, uh, the hero was coming up and turning into this god object, but I'm, I'm pulling them apart now, and, I, and I'm doing it with a clear head. Uh, I was getting kind of tired towards the end of the stream uh, last Monday, and so I, I wasn't really clear to myself how I was doing it. So um, there, uh, we also have uh, damage. So damage is, you know, apply damage uh, would go on hit points as well. Uh, and that, which means then that we need the, this, this guy right here. We need the, uh, the current, the, the accumulated damage. So now for hit points, we have here, we have the accumulated damage. When we calculate hit points, uh, we got this dot class features hit points per level. Okay. So that's something that's not in here. Uh, this isn't going to work. Um, where is class features? Ah, there it is. And that is from here. So I think we'll need to pull that in. Actually, I, I, I wonder, now that I'm breaking these, these apart, if I really need this the way I was doing. Let's pull it in for now and see it, and do that, treat that as a later refactor. Um, yeah, you're, you're right, Simon. Uh, JavaScript does kind of, you can, with the functionalness of it, it's the, it's the lack of typing, right? It, it lets you compact your code down, I think. Um, well, that's exactly what I'm trying to do, Simon. I mean, that's kind of the whole point of TDD, right? Is by test driving it, you'll have to design evolve and be as big or as small as it needs to be. But you hit these points where, and this, this kata really does this. There's this point where you get this, it's like, I've got enough critical mass of code that there's a significant refactor here. And then you end up spending, you know, an hour refactoring a bunch of stuff, which is what I'm in the middle of doing right now. Um, but yeah, I'm looking at these, de uh, these, these, this class data here. And I'm kind of thinking I don't need it, but I'm not, I don't want to, I don't want to do that just yet. I, 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 I think, I think I'm not going to need it, but I don't know that. So I'm going to go ahead and pull it in to uh, hit points. I can go up here, and there's my class features. And I think I'm going to go ahead and pull in this little helper function here because it was kind of nice. And I, th this is one of the reasons why I think this will go away, but because because this function is going to get duplicated in a lot of places, which makes me think that and, and all for just to say if you're a fighter, your hit points are different. Since the scope's narrowed, I don't feel the need to templatize to datafy it. I, it's, I, I think maybe I could get away with just having a couple if statements, and then it wouldn't be as messy as it was in the other class. That's kind of what I'm thinking. So this is going to be class this dot hero dot class. So we're going to get the class. We get the class features for the the, uh, the current class, and then we can say this dot class features hit points per level plus this dot underscore hero dot constitution modifier was this dot underscore hero dot level or times it. Yeah, it would be. That would be interesting, Simon. I uh, I, I did this in Elixir once, and that was a really interesting experience. I don't I don't know Elixir well enough to feel confident to do it on stream, but um, but as a pure functional language. Like this is very much this problem is very object oriented, right? But if you do this exercise in a language that doesn't have objects, oh, that's kind of you know you can learn some interesting stuff doing that. Um, <clears throat> and so that, that's kind of what happened. Um, okay, so this dot hit points minus this dot damage. That, that's correct because it's, it's referring to that. This that current hit points refers to that. This that damage is just adding. Uh, I think this guy is ready to uh, wire up. Let's see what happens. Yeah, yeah, to fight our over engineering. Like, I think this this little class templatizing thing, Brandon, is an example of me over engineering slightly, and my refactoring is going to pull it out, and so I can undo that uh, slight mistake there. Oh yeah, 
Uh, Grumpy Game Dev does, has got, done a lot of F-sharp. He, he might be uh, someone to talk to about that. Um, okay, so we've got hit points. Instead of doing this calculation here, we should be able to say uh, this dots hit points dots uh, hit points. And I, I think I'll probably rename that just like points or something like that, or current or max or something like that. Uh, let's see if that's not going to work everywhere. That needs to be a return for one. <laughs> um, huh. I, I wasn't expecting them to all pass, actually. But it, probably my test isn't yeah, not, yeah, current hit points fails because damage isn't being propagated through. So that was what I was expecting. Uh, add or dot damage. And we'll just pass in the points. Now they should all pass. Yes, they do. <laughs> yeah, I'm kind of right there with you, Simon. The functional stuff is is sometimes hard to get your head around. And there's some some functional concepts where there, there's certain there's easy things like you know map and reduce and, and and just you know taking arrays and transforming them. But then you start getting the advanced functional concepts, and my, I just have not gotten my head there yet either. Um, you know, it's that whole what the what the hell's a nomad uh, mon, monad kind of kind of experience. Um, I got to do this live as well. This can go to hit points dot is alive. There we go. So now I've fully delegated that. I'm going to go in here and I, I think I want to refactor this to say uh, this is current. I just want to call this current. And I want to call this uh, max, maximum, maximum. And is alive is still good there. Um, that's just, um, we'll say uh, add damage. Let's add damage. I think that's a better word. Um, eh. Actually, we'll leave it damage. Um, uh, no, we won't. I, I'm vacillating here. <laughs> and so that's going to fail some tests because it's not delegating to things that exist. So add damage, and this is going to hit points dot maximum. This is going to be hit points dot current. Which one's still failing? It is. Um, Expect that anyone received not a number. Um, which one am I missing here? I'm sure that's because something's returning undefined. Expected current hit points. We're calling this current. Did I? Oh, that. There we go. That's better. And this is going to be this dot current. I changed my methods, but I didn't change them relative to itself. So. Uh, take damage might be a bad, it may not be a bad answer, Simon. Uh, or, or apply damage. Um, that might be good too. I'm gonna to go with add for now. Uh, I, I think it's easy. I think it's good enough. I, I just damage sounds like a noun. It's ambiguous to whether it's a noun or a verb, and so uh, add is clearly uh, a noun or a verb in this case, and so it becomes verb noun, which I think is a little just a slightly clearer. Um, and then we got this little class features thing. Cool, 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 cool. Um, I'm feeling like this might be a good time to commit. 
Um, get commit dash m uh, extracted uh, experience and hit points. There you go. Good old generic cream soda. <laughs> Diet cream soda, actually. Um, so we got the hit points uh, delegating. We've got um, alignment and class I'm, I'm putting off. Because alignment and class are kind of interesting. Because alignment and class have this validation that says the alignment has to agree with the class, the class has to agree with the alignment. And if I split those out into separate things, then I'm going to have to uh, do that validation. That that code, that validation code, could get duplicated, or I need to create a separate validation class. And so I'm going to wait and do, wait to do that one because that's a little more sophisticated. I think it's a little more interesting. I'd like to get the rest of the stuff kind of knocked out of the way. Um, so let's take a look at what do we got left here? Name. We could I, we could put name, but I think I think that's kind of silly because it's a string and that's fine. Uh, alignment and class. I just said, well, I, I don't want to do those yet. Uh, I don't need damage here. That's dead code. At least I hope it's dead code. Yeah, <laughs> you could use this as the, the brains of a simple text adventure. Uh, I should I should uh, consider uh, maybe creating a, a mud or something that uses this. Okay, so uh, name, level and experience is done. Alignment and class I'm going to wait on. Abilities already work this way. We've got armor class. Uh, we've got attack modifier. And we got attack damages. Uh, armor class will be easy. Uh, let's go ahead and do that real quick. Uh, new file. Uh, armor class. Um, because armor class is just going to be a matter of... Um, that's going to work a lot like... Uh, like uh, level did initially. So let's copy that. Go armor class. Armor class. And then we just want to get the armor class. Uh, you know, actually, now that I'm thinking about this, it might just be good to say value. Um, let's see what that looks like, and maybe I'll go back and refactor a couple of the other ones here. But because armor class just has a single value that's computed, there's nothing around it. Uh, value feels like it's it's okay. Um, let's go back to our hero and pull out this calculation here. This dot underscore hero dot dexterity dot modifier. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's a you know, you're, you, in some ways you're right, Simon. It, it's, a, it's it's kind of a waste to do it as a academic exercise, but it's um it's a fun exercise, and it does do a good job of of sort of mimicking the types of things that you would see. The, the, the goal of this was to say, hey, um, I want a cod of it, like, makes me write code like I do at work. Uh, and not just, you know, calculate bowling scores and stuff like that. And uh, I feel like it succeeds at that uh, fairly well, actually. Um, and so that, that that was one of the goals in creating it. It's intended to be big. But you're right, a lot of people have, have done this exercise and said, I'm going to turn this into a game. You know, more power to you. Please do. I think that would be awesome. I always encourage people to do that and uh, show me what they did when they got done. Um, but it, it is a really fun exercise here, isn't it? Um, so armor class, I think that's all armor class needs to do. So let's um, let's start um, let's start extracting it. Um, level, I say this dot underscore armor class. 
class. I'm going to abbreviate this here. I, I often try not to abbreviate in code, but some of the terms in in D and D are just so established; it doesn't really matter. So, I don't think uh, in this particular scenario it, it hurts. Yeah, complicated but well defined. Exactly. Okay, so this uh, armor class should be, then return this dot underscore ac dot value. And please still pass it. Still passes. Excellent. Um, I'm gonna yeah. I'm gonna rename this. Underscore HP. Uh, this one's gonna stay the way it is. Yeah, yeah I, I think that's I think that's a nice improvement. Um, and then armor class just has a value. Uh, I think maximum current and is alive is is still appropriate names for what we have here. Level and experience. This is still good. Um, do I want to change that to XP? I think I do. No, no, we'll leave it. For, for whatever reason, that looks better. It's 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 because it's a it's it's because it's external. I always want the external stuff to look pretty, and the internal stuff to. I'm okay with the abbreviations. So. Um. Cool. What else do we have left? Uh, we could get name. Uh, we're not going to do name because that'd be silly. Although it would be consistent. Um. <laughs> hey, Sierra Lash, how's it going? Uh, Simon, you make me laugh, right? So not like work at all then. It's typically complicated, ill-defined, and subject to change. <laughs> it's it's also not nearly as fun, right? Um, <laughs> I, I think I am going to pull name out just, just to be consistent, right? Because it, it, one of the things you, I always like to do is I like to have all the things at the same level of abstraction. So like, you know, all the things in here are kind of operating at that same abstract level. And so this guy then becomes a, a class composing a bunch of other classes, even for the name. Um, let's move this up here. We got, uh, put it in the order, armor, uh, level, um, level and experience, uh, my abilities, level, armor class at points. It's the same order they're in in here. Um, so let's go ahead and uh, create something stupid simple for name. And I'm going to just copy armor class to do this because it's that's dead simple. So we'll say this dot name is that. The name dot value will return this dot underscore name. And so we're pretty much just doing this. Uh, this is name, yeah. And we'll go ahead and just, since we have plenty of space now in this file, we don't need to conserve the carriage returns. Oh, wow, there's lots of people chit chatting. This is always great. <laughs> Am I saying your name wrong, uh, Siri Lash? <laughs> A wild dev chatter appears. <laughs> ah. Is it, oh, it's Sire. So I've been I, I've been butchering it forever. Uh, sire, as in as in Sir, right? Okay, I'll try to do, I'll try to do the, do better on that. And then this dot name name. Oh, doo -doo -doo. <laughs> oh, 
Okay, is it is that I'm assuming that's pronounced the uh, Fire Fest? <laughs> is, is that the big festival that like just like abruptly failed and everyone lost all their money on? <laughs> I'm so out of tune with pop culture, uh, mainstream culture at times. Um Oh, that'll work. And then up here in hero, we'll bring in const name equals require dot slash name. And then we'll say name equals new name this. And then we'll say this dot underscore name dot value. Not a valid argument. That. I did it again. <laughs> there we go. And that should all pass now. And it does. Hooray! Oh, yeah. No, Netflix did have a, a thing on that, didn't it? Um, cool. So these are all a delegating. Uh, almost. So we got name, alignment, and class we still need to do. Our three abilities that we care about so far, level and XP, armor class, and hit points, have all been delegated to little helper classes. Cute little helper classes. Um, let's look at attack modifier. That one's... Actually, let's let's do attack damage first. I'm, I'm progressively getting to the harder ones. Attack mo modifier is interesting because it's got some actual if statements and some behavior in there. And then attack uh, attack damage and crit damage, I think, is nat naturally go together. So uh, let's commit. It's been a little while since I've committed. Get status. Get add dot. Extracted name and armor class. Uh, the uh, have I figured out how I'm going to handle the din the dynamic modifiers? Uh, which ones are you thinking of? The uh, like the attack modifier here. I keep glancing at chat, hoping it'll come uh, uh, in, in spite of lag, right? <laughs> Her spells, classes, equipments, etc. No idea. Haven't gotten anywhere near that. Um, well, we're doing classes right now. Um, and so, um, like, the attack modifier does handle that. Um, and so does, like, the um, the attack, uh, multi uh, attack damage for criticals. Uh, we, we've, uh, what I did was I put it into this little... I put I got this uh, class features thing called data.js and it's got sort of a default and then overridden versions of that and so like the attack progression and the hit points per level um, yeah like Lego <laughs> exactly Simon remembers <laughs> um, yeah 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 that's where it's gonna get really interesting um, but I, I actually think this little data.js may go away because the things that are in here are spread across the, all the the uh, decomposing classes that I'm making. Um, and so I, I don't know that it's necessarily worth it to have a this thing then join them all back together. Uh, whereas I could just put the rule in like attack modifier. Um, so I think that might actually work better. And so I think the refactor after I, I'm done decomposing this uh, uh, god object is will be to take this uh, this data thing and uh, in in a sense sort of inline it and it bring it spread the data amongst the classes that need it. Uh, so I think that'll be what happens next. After that, so that's the path I'm going there. Lego my ego. L L Lego, wait, that's wrong. Uh, a sire lash. That, that's that's completely wrong. It's uh, Lego my ego, right? <laughs> Um, and alignment and class are going to be D2. So let's do, um, attack modifier. 
And I'm just going to go ahead and copy pasta again. We'll call this guy attack modifier. And then rename the class. And then it'll have a value, which will not be that. Right now it'll be undefined. I actually read a great um, uh, uh, metaphor for uh, Simon for uh, uh, programming. I was learning when I was learning Ruby. Um, I can't remember. I, I, was it? I, th I think it was uh, J Jim Wyrick that did this talk or this blog thing I was reading. It might have been um, James. Is it James Buck? Yeah, James Buck. I can't remember. But um, they said that, you know, coming from Java and going to Ruby, Java is like Legos. You build these things and then you stack them together and connect them together. And it's like programming in Legos. But Ruby, because of its uh, super looseness and its uh, uh, really sophisticated and, um, uh, you know, metaprogramming model and that kind of stuff, and because you can monkey patch it all to hell and back, was kind of like uh, coding with Play-Doh. And so... Um, and JavaScript to me feels like it's actually somewhere in between those two places. Like you can do some Play-Doh like things because it's loosely typed, but it's not, it's not like, so it's not as far as like Ruby is where Ruby just kind of lets you do whatever you want. Um, and so it's, it's like, a, it's like, it's like programming with squishy Legos, right? <laughs> For lack of a better analogy, uh, squishy Legos. That's gonna, that's what we're doing today. You heard it here first. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, exactly. Now, I like Ruby. Um, um, it is, yeah, you can write some of the most beautiful spaghetti in Ruby. Um, and they always seem to be, <laughs> it always be, seems to be spaghetti and cucumbers, doesn't it? <laughs> you've done a lot. I don't know if you've, uh, I don't know how to pronounce your, your, uh, your, uh, your handle there, uh, Avi. I'm, I'm going to go with Avi for now, if that's okay. Um, but, um, I don't know if you've done much cucumber, but I've seen a lot of spaghetti inside a cucumber, uh, in sort of, inside of step definitions or cucumber. Um, and yeah, you're right. It's so easy to misuse. So, so easy, but it's when it's powerful, man, it's beautiful, right? So I realized I spelled attack modifier wrong. Wasn't affecting anything, but you know, still it was a thing. Um, okay, so this has class features as well. So I'm going to bring that in to uh, attack modifier. And I know this is duplication. I expected this. And I'm okay with that for now. Because I will refactor out that duplication once it's, well, done being duplicated. <laughs> so attack modifier here uh, needs that. And then I think it pretty much just needs this function right here. Uh, this is going to be this dot underscore hero dot class. This dot underscore hero dot dexterity dot modifier. I should copy that and then I wouldn't have to keep typing it. <laughs> <laughs> Cucumber makes you sad, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's it's just it's it's that gray brown blob that you uh, left over when you're done playing with the play doh, and then it solidifies, and then no one can modify the code anymore. It's uh, such a rich metaphor. Um, there we go. <laughs> the techniques, yeah. <laughs> Okay, so I think this is what tech modifier needs to look like. I'm going to start, I'm going to do this. No, not yet, too soon. Um, this dot score. 
Start up here. Const attack modifier equals require. Let's while I'm thinking about it here, let's let's see let's watch my test just sit here in Twitch. Um dot slash attack modifier. And then we can say this dot underscore um, attack mod fire. We'll do attack. Yeah. I don't, I don't want to abbreviate a mod. That doesn't communicate enough to me. Pass in this. And these should still be passing. They are. And then I can go into attack modifier and say return this dot attack modifier dot value. <laughs> value. And that's not going to pass because it doesn't compi uh, compile. This is JavaScript. Uh, it doesn't. It's an it, it's invalid syntax. All right. So. Okay. Uh, that is all passing. So that's good. Um. Let's look at uh, damage. Uh, and I. I I'm probably going to call that attack damage, and then we'll put attack damage and critical in the same class. So, um, and uh, this feels like it's a lot like attack modifier, so I'm going to copy it. And we'll call this attack damage. Have I told the story about the uh, the D&D book where uh, they were uh, originally going to say damage? And... Um, I gave it away. I ruined it. I ruined the story already. I said the wrong word. So originally they were talking about uh, wizards. They were talking about mages. They wanted to use the word mage for wizard throughout the book. And then someone decided at some point that they wanted to change it from mage to wizard because that was just like a decision that uh, TSR at the time, not Wizards of the Coast, TSR, had made. And so they did a global search and replace in the document to replace the word mage with wizard. And, uh, and my friend Benjamin has this book. It's great. You can go look through it and it talks about fireballs doing, you know, you know, six die eight or six die six points of the wizard as opposed to the mage, right? <laughs> and so wherever you see the word mage, even as part of word, it got replaced with wizard and it made it all the way to print. <laughs> That's the best part is no one caught that and it made it all the way to print. Um, one of my favorite <laughs> favorite examples of why we proofread and why global search and replace is dangerous, right? Um, powerful, dangerous. If you got tests, you can do it safely, right? That's kind of the point. Yeah, bad Q and A, <laughs> exactly. Bad Q and A um, or QA, quality and assurance, quality assurance, questions and answers. One of those. Um, so let's pull these guys into attack damage as well. We don't, we don't want a value. We want the, uh, uh, what, what do you call it? crit, uh, attack damage and critical damage, um, be normal and crit value and crit. We'll, we'll call it normal and critical. And then we'll get rid of value here because we don't need that anymore. Go ahead and add some little returnees here to, you know, some vertical white space. Uh, that's this that class features. This is going to be underscore hero dots. There we go. I can type. I swear I can type. I took typing class 30 years ago. Um, actually, more than 30 years ago. <laughs> That's exactly right, Simon. I actually uh, wonder if using Git and just plain text would be a... a it seems like to me that would be a good way to, uh, to write documents right to write uh like if i was working on a novel i think i would store it in git because it would change it store my revision history and if i wanted to you know say well i have that you know i deleted this section but i want to go back to it uh and you know 
it's a good candidate. Just do all my uh, novels in uh, Markdown. Right? I mean, it's, Git is designed for keeping history of text. We, we use it for code, but it's really about text. Okay, so that looks like the normal. That looks, this is looking good. Yeah, I think that's what it needs to be. So let's bring in attack damage. Did I rename that over here? Yes, I did. It was what prompted me to tell the story about the wizard. Uh, attack damage. There we go. Missed a underscore attack the wizard equals new attack damage this oh that's really cool Simon uh, I'm, I'm glad uh, I'm glad uh, there are people doing that I, yeah I, I kind of feel like it's not like it gets that hard it's not that much harder than using a spreadsheet really uh, I mean, for its basic functionality, some of the more advanced stuff, obviously, is. But this, you know, spreadsheets are like that too, right? You see some of these uh, PowerPoint or these uh, these Excel jockeys that are just they're what they can do with a spreadsheet's insane. Um, and if you can master that, you can master Git. That's that's my point. Um, okay, so let's let's um, use this dot underscore attack damage dot normal. see if that still works it does I'm, not, I'm feeling you know this refactoring I'm gonna regress saying this I know I am um, it's been going real smooth I usually you know I start refactoring I get myself down in some rat hole and then I'm like oh my god why won't it work and <laughs> and it's going super smooth tonight and I know I've totally just screwed myself by pointing that out right I've, it's gonna bite me in the ass I pointed it out. I bit the hand. You bit the hand, Marty. You bit the hand. Ah. <laughs> Version control on the Z drive. Yeah. Um, oh, God. I wish that wasn't true. Okay. So, name and level and experience and abilities and armor. These are all just delegating now. It makes me kind of feel like I could just do this. Because these are just in a little property getter things now. Um, it kind of makes me want to do this. <laughs> I know there are people that will mock me for doing this. But there's a little bit of satisfaction in it. And it does actually make it more readable. It just makes it a pain in the butt to modify later. Because you can you can quickly see that you know all these returns do what you think they'll do, right? If Brandon's still on stream and he is actually wa watching, which he shouldn't be, uh, he's probably uh, twitching uh, at the moment. Although the setters are different. Yeah, I know you can. Um, I can kind of do that here, too. I, I don't know if I can do that with a getter. I mean, because you do have arrow functions in JavaScript. Like, this... Um, I, could, I could do it here, maybe. But, but with the class syntax, that might not work. I don't know, I don't, I don't know if you can do that or not. I'm, I'm kind of curious. You, you've piqued my interest, Simon. You made me think that maybe this is possible. So we're going to try it and see what happens. Um, yeah, you're right. It is pretty for use cases like that. Uh, in the case of get strength, because this is a pro this is a property getter, I don't think that'll work. But for damage, I'm I don't think it'll work with the class syntax. I, I could Google it, but I'm I'm trying to think what would that look like, right? You know, damage equals you know. Um, 
and that would uh, apply the damage. It would return something, but we don't care about that. But did that actually work? Oh, come on. That did not just work. It can't be that easy. Hot damn. <laughs> I think that just went up and worked. Um, okay, so one thing I just noticed here while, while I was thinking about this is I don't think class features is being used anywhere. So let's delete it. It is not being used anywhere. So I'm, I'm actually skeptical of this. I'm starting to think that maybe my let's let's make it break i want to make sure this is actually doing something okay yeah uh doubling the damage would make test fail it does that is totes working let's do it here This is this is very pleasing. <laughs> uh, there's some more dead code up there. Yeah, I've seen that too, Simon. Where people will get a little um, uh, arrow function happy. Yeah. Okay, let's see. Can we do it here? I don't think this is going to work. Yeah, that's not syntactically valid. Wait a minute. There we go. Now that, that, that yeah, that doesn't work. I mean, I could do a function like this would work. But then it's not a getter anymore. So I don't I don't think you can do that with getters, which kind of makes sense. But it's kind of nice down here. Yeah, if something's not needed. Are you sure that's not because you missed a test case? Um, in this particular case, I'm actually very confident of that because I've got, I mean, I test drove it all. And so, um, I mean, I could have missed a test case, but the, the bit that I deleted, uh, was this little, uh, uh, class thing that I had, I had been slowly migrating this class features, which I migrated over to other classes and I knew that I would stop needing it eventually. So I was expecting it in this particular case. Okay. Uh, these are going to be fun here. We've got we got alignment left. We got class left. I think that's all we've got left, right? Yeah. Okay. Well, let's commit what we have so far. Uh, get status. Get add dot. Get get dash m attack damage and modifier extracted. Also, more arrow functions. There we go. I'm going to push this because I'm feeling pretty confident. Ah. Well, this has been about an hour so far. This has been a fun refactor. Um, so now we've got... So now we got two things we could do. We could finish refactoring this and introduce some more duplication, or we could get rid of the duplication that we have in some of these other classes. So this data's data.js uh, is brought into and in, in the same way in attack modifier, attack damage, and I think in hit points, yeah. Here are some of these extra windows we have open. And so I, I kind of want to get rid of this duplication and bring this in. 
But the, the other duplication we have, the, the other thing we can do is we can extract out the um, alignment and class into their own thing. But when we do that, this validation logic is going to get duplicated across them. And so it would be introducing a second set of duplication and then a refactor to pull that out into its own thing. So I think I want to get rid of the data.js first. So that'll allow me to delete a file. I think that's probably more valuable. So, um, so when we look at hit points, we look at uh, class features, hit points per level. I think uh, we just have, let's, let's copy this over. Let's see what this looks like. Um, for hit points. So hit points per level is five, 10, and five. And so I uh, think we could get away with, I uh, say HP per level equals five, 10, five. const and then we can get rid of the class features and get rid of the class features and we can just say um, hit points per level of this dot underscore hero dot class. And let's watch and see, let's see if that still passes. Run them again because I didn't see them run. And it does. And so that's that's a little simpler than having this whole thing we got to require. I, I think this is a little, I like this a little bit better. Uh, I am going to add a HP per level as a little private helper function that sort of uh, encapsulates this because I think that's a little cleaner. And then we'll just call HP per level. Yeah, so that, that, that makes this little, little line here a little cleaner. Um, yeah, it makes me, I mean, it just gave me a, a thing that I kind of want to do. Um, and this should be a get. Like that. Uh, it it kind of makes me want to refactor this a little bit and say, uh, to get rid of this, this dot underscore hero everywhere, which is, 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 Strictly speaking, a law of Demeter violation. Um, and do like this, that, uh, get level. But this is going to get duplicated everywhere. And then if this can just return like that. Although it does make this code up here. cleaner. And that's not a terrible thing. It also makes it not pass. <laughs> what did I? Oh, this is because I copied the wrong thing. There we go. And then we can say get um, uh, constitution modifier, and that would be this. The return on it. Uh, 
I think I like that a little bit better. I'm not going to go through and do every single one of these because it's going to be a little tedious. But I, I think I do like that a little bit better. Um, I'm, I'm actually tempted <laughs> to, to make these... I have I have mixed feelings about uh, the the get operator sometimes in the, the, the property things in JavaScript because um, I have to do the curly braces with it like before I could use arrow functions um, so like formal destructuring yeah kinda yeah um, although that'd be I can't I, I wouldn't be able uh, could I could I destructure that out of the hero. No, I don't want to do that because I because the, the hero will change its state. But it, you made me think I could take the hero when it's coming in and then destructure it and just get the values I care about. But they need to be updated constantly, so I can't do that. Um, but like if I made these function calls instead, then I could say this. All right, I could I could do this th thing we were just talking about and get rid of the return and the curly braces. without using the getters. But I've been using the getters uh, throughout my code. I don't want to refactor at that level, so I'm not going to do that. I want to be consistent with that uh, behavior. So. There we go. Well, it's, it's, nothing's wrong with the arrow functions. It's just that um, if I do the getter, um, then I'm calling this here, and then I, and then I want to go through and be consistent everywhere. And that means then that my uh, hero spec will change. It'll just cascade into a million places. And I've sort of established a code where I'm using getters and setters as opposed to functions. And so it's, um, it would just be really tedious to go through and change it all now. And it isn't, I think it's slightly cleaner, uh, but it would be a really boring stream. <laughs> so maybe, maybe I'll do it off stream. Um, uh, which is the same reason I'm not going to make this change everywhere else uh, tonight either, because it would just get kind of tedious. But I think this is a good change. Um, and I, I actually think getting rid of the getters might be better. I ran into this into the Redis mode as well, where using the getters and the setters uh, was like, I couldn't make them async, and I needed asynchronicity. I needed async management on them. And, you know, I couldn't do this async await. I could do an await inside of it. I couldn't do an await inside of a getter because there was no async and that kind of stuff. So um, it's kind of a pain in the butt. So I'm starting to get become of the opinion that the getter setter syntax in JavaScript is a little bit of a hassle. So yeah, if I was using TypeScript, I could uh, uh, it would it would have enough knowledge to change it in one place and then f fan out everywhere, just like uh, like in Java does with Intel with IntelliJ, but. Uh, but we'll, we'll work with what we got here. Uh, I'm still pretty happy with what we have. Um, I'm going to go ahead and do, now that we've done this, we got hit points, we got attack damage. Let's get rid of the data uh, for attack damage. Is attack damage using class features? Yeah, yeah, there's a crit multiplier. Um, but that's really just looking at uh, rogues. And so I could almost not make that not data. So in here I could say, let's look at our requirements, right? Um, does anyone do any, uh, have anything other than that? So fighter, um, does triple damage or crits. Um, Yeah, no one else does. So that doesn't need to be data. That can be an if statement. We can say um, if uh, this dot underscore hero dot class is a rogue, then do one thing. Um, actually, you can say uh, let uh, multiple multiplier equal rogue if they're rogue it's three otherwise it's two and 
then we don't need the class features at all because we're not using them. And that still passes. I think that's plenty. There's only one, one, this is only an exception one, so it doesn't need to be turned into data yet. So, um, and so we did hit points, we did attack modifier. Uh, let's look at, um, or we did a hit points and attack damage. Let's look at attack modifier. So attack modifier has got progressions. There's a one half and a one. And if we uh, peek ahead a little bit, which I technically shouldn't do, uh, there are other attack modify attack progressions. So uh, I this could be templatized. So I'm, I'm gonna or this could be dataified. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that for here. And again, let's look at how we did it hit points here. I'm sitting here saying, oh, you know, we don't have to do it for those fighter 10, rogue five. There's a single exception. I, I could put in here if um, um, if it's a fighter, then hit points for level is 10, otherwise it's five. And maybe that maybe I should. Um, well, let's explore the different ways of doing it. We'll see what happens. See which one we like best. This one's interesting. Because you've got this uh, the modifier is whether it's dexterity or strength, depending on whether you're a rogue or not. Um, and then for the attack progression here, uh, that's pull, pulled out of data. So call this the attack progression. Uh, for none, it's one half. For fighter, it's one. For rogue, it's one half. And then I mean, this uh, this becomes um, this becomes the same pattern we did down here. Uh, get um, attack progression turn that that should still pass and it does hooray and now um, data.js is not being used anywhere and it can be deleted Goodbye. Yeah, I, I kind of, I, I agree with you a little bit, Simon. Um, I, I will, I will say that I'm of two minds about it. Um, and I think, um, in this particular case, the data, it, it is fairly data driven here anyhow, except for this particular one. Um, I mean, we, we could make this even more data driven, right? Uh, the attack modifier here, I could say instead of um, just doing the same as saying if they're rogue, use dexterity, otherwise use strength. I could um, have in here, you know, a constant for uh, attack uh, ability. Like this, this this would be kind of interesting, right? This is a little, this is kind of a meta programming here, right? And uh, and we want we would have uh, strength. The fighter would be strength, and the rogue would be a dexterity. <laughs> That's fair. Um. And then instead of uh, looking, calculating the modifier, we could just uh, get the modifier by saying uh, this dot hero um, yeah, we, we could get the attack ability based on this dot hero to class. And then once we have that, do this <laughs> yeah 
Yeah, yeah, exactly. Every, nothing being real defined in the real world. And so now we're, we're getting on calculating our modifier, and we can even inline this. Um, Uh, and and that works because we're you know we're using reflection in JavaScript to do this. I don't know if I like this or not. I, I mean, I could decompose it a little bit. Um, now let's see what happens when we do this. Get uh, attack uh, ability turn. Let's uh, let's let's play around with this. See where, where see where this takes us. Like that, and we'll say get ability modifier, which I think will go up here because it will have this code in it right here. And uh, while we're at it, why don't we go ahead and pull in level. So now our value is being computed incorrectly somehow. It doesn't work. What did I break? Okay, so it wasn't it wasn't on the level refactor. Um, oh, that's what I did wrong. There we go. So let's uh, copy level over again. There we go. That's passing. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I, I actually like this better because it does feel more flexible. Um, well, let's look at I, I think you've sold me on the idea. I'm, I'm going to go ahead and, and, and bring back the uh, I'm going to, in attack damage, I'm going to go ahead and put in the const. I, I think this will be, uh, this is fine. It'll be fine. Crit multiplier be two, two, three. Yeah, yeah, this will be good. And then down here we've got, um, um, yeah, we can say get uh, multiplier. That's going to look pretty much the same as all the other ones have. Let's just copy that over. Rename it multiplier. And then uh, here we'll say this dot multiplier. Make sure that still passes. And we'll go ahead and do the strength modifier too, just like we did with the constitution modifier. Except that be strength.
There you go. Now they're all using that same pattern. I think that's... I'm happy with that. Yeah. Hero is still... Everything passes in Hero still. We don't have the data.js, we, we, uh, but we've still data fight it. Yeah. Okay. That's it. Rub my hands together like I'm cold, right? Um, I think it's time we tackled, after we commit, uh, class and alignment. So let's go ahead and commit uh, what we got here. Git add dot. Get removed data for great justice. There we go. Do, 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 do. Okay, so now we have alignment and class. These are going to be really similar. Okay, new file alignment.js. We'll do alignment first. Um, and in some ways, these, these will be really not more complicated than name. Uh, in other ways, they'll be uh, much more complicated. Alignment. Alignment. And uh, we take the hero. The alignment is going to default to what's what's it default to in the hero? Neutral. And when we get it, we'll get it. When we set it. We set it, and then let's take a look at alignment here. When we set it, we call validate class. We call validate alignment. Like that. And then this validate alignment calls validate class and alignment, and then calls validate in list. Let's just copy this all over and get rid of the bit we don't need. Which is validate class. And so this should, should still work. Uh, so this will call this.validateAlignment. Uh, the alignment will be, um, we'll check to see if it's in the list or not. Uh, we'll check that the uh, class and alignment are in agreement. So this, this says uh, validate in list. Is this a valid alignment or not? Good neutral evil. The class and alignment validation goes through and says, is it a rogue? Is it good? And if rogues cannot be good, and we'll throw an exception. And the validate and list here is just helpful. So, um, and if we go into hero, we should be able to say, um, replace, let's go up to name, bring in const alignment, capital A alignment equals require dot slash alignment. So we'll bring it in. We'll say uh, new alignment this. And then here in alignment, we'll just delegate to turn uh, this dot alignment dot value. And when we call sets, we'll say this dot alignment dot value equals alignment. And let's get back so that I can see my test passing or failing as the case may be. Um, uh, oh, that's interesting. The uh, rogues cannot be good is failing. Did I do that wrong? Ah, 
here, missed a spot. I need to pass in the heroes class for that to work. There, there we go. Um, almost no modifications to that code. And that's alignment. That was way faster than I thought it was going to be. Uh, I'm happy with it. Uh, but it was faster than I thought. So I squeak around in my chair. So uh, let's do class. I'm sure, I'm sure a class class won't be a problem, right? <laughs> let's just copy uh, alignment. Rename it class. Class class um, return class has the value of class was I able to get away with that before I am because I prefixed it with an underscore that's why I got away with it before is that what I did before? That is what I did before. The initial value of class is none. Now uh, this is class, because I can't use the class keyword there. And then over here, I'm just going to copy this whole kit and caboodle over again. Oh, I just hit control C, damn it. <laughs> Why'd they put those next to each other anyhow, all right? And then the uh, validate alignment isn't needed here. We call validate class this dot hero dot alignment escape sequence in JavaScript for uh, there's I'm sure there's a trick to do it um, but uh, th th this is the trick that I've been using in the past is uh, I saw this in Java a long time ago so I'm mimicking that. Um, Hey, all my tests pass. That's good. Uh, I mean, if you if you find one, that'd be great. I, I'll 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 go ahead and change it, but uh, I don't think it's possible. Um, it'd be a good it'd be a good topic to research on the uh, MDN. Okay, so let's replace class up here. Const class equals require class. This would be new class. This. And that's not going to work, of course. Class.value. And then what is failing? Oh, <laughs> I probably, what did I do wrong here? I'm calling validate alignment. There we go. Oh yeah, absolutely, uh, Simon. Uh, get, yeah, getting a little toasty, and it's uh, oh dark thirty. So you have a good night, and um, it looks like I've got a uh, I've got a, 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 a bot to ban anyhow. So uh, let me do that really quick. Slash ban. Ah, switching from Mac to Windows. I always get it wrong.
There we go. That's better. <laughs> okay. Oops, wrong mouse. I have two identical. This this is my this is the mouse that I use with my MacBook. And this is the mouse that's hooked up to my Windows streaming PC. <laughs> what could possibly go wrong? <laughs> okay, so everything's passing. Um, but I've got duplication. So let's commit git status um, on. There we go. I've got one Bluetooth keyboard that I can switch between the two machines, but I've got two separate mice. It's it's all quite confusing. Uh, git status. Uh, git add dot. Git commit dash m. Extracted class and alignment. Git push. And now uh, I think what I want to do here, because I've got this this duplicate logic here and here, and I know that actually race comes into the play later here, where we'll have to validate that like halflings can't be evil. Um, so we're actually going to end up with something that is a validate class, race, and alignment altogether. Um, I'm going to uh, create a. Uh, a separate class to contain these guys. So let's do a new file. And we're just going to call it the validator for now. Validator.js. And I'm going to take this guy, this code here, and put it in validator.js. And I'm going to take Which one did I guy? Okay. And I should just need this one here. There we go. And we're going to say class. Um, this is going to be the uh, class and alignment. In fact, I, this doesn't even need to be a class. This can just be a group of functions. Uh, we don't need to instantiate this thing. We just they, they, They're just static functions. Um, is that true? Now, now I say that out loud, I'm not sure if that's true or not. So, um, we got validate class, validate alignment. Then Nick calls validate class and alignment. I could just make validate class and alignment the function. You pass in the class, you pass in the alignment. It does this check. does this check and then it, it checks to see if uh, they play together nice or not that does mean we're gonna hit this line twice when we don't need to which is slightly less efficient um, that's probably okay Uh, module. Well, let's go ahead and export these and see what it looks like. And we got validate class and alignment. And would that be it? <laughs> the other option is we do validate class and we pass in the hero, which is not quite as satisfying. Um, or we could just pass in the class and the alignment for all of these and we just check the first thing first and then check the other thing later with the assumption that that is correct but um, yeah I think that I think this works let's do that uh, so this is our valid list of classes let's go ahead and say const classes 
I'm refactoring without a test here. Well, I'm not really, but I am. But uh, we'll find out soon enough. Classes, and then we can do const alignments. Like that. Just to get these these uh, these strings out of there. Um, there's no need for this because we're just calling helper functions that are right there with us, and then we should be able to in alignment require. Um, Yeah, let's say let's const uh, validator. In fact, this doesn't. I, I don't even. I, I can just export the function. I don't need to export an object. I think I'm going to leave it there um, as an object because I could see other validators living here, and this could end up becoming sort of a. Uh, uh, you know, be, end up becoming one of those uh, sort of utility classes where a bunch of stuff lives. So let's let's leave that there. Class validator equals require. Um, dot slash uh, validator. And then in here, we can just say this dot. Or we can say validator. Dot validate class and alignment. And this would be this dot underscore hero dot class, which we already have, and the alignment. And then it blows up. Why? Expected evil got undefined. What? Did I? Uh, I, I, I did. I did not return because this guy returns the alignment. That is why we need this separate function. Is it? Hmm, how do I want to do that? Let's copy it over and see what it looks like. If we do validate alignment and then return the alignment. We can do that validate in the list, and then we can call validate class and alignment and make sure they're in agreement. But then we have to pass the class in here as well. Um, if, if we do it here, we validate their alignment of the alignment in the class. And we can't. We don't know which one to return. And I don't want to pass an argument saying which one to return. I think that'd be kind of dumb. Um, let's go into let's. We'll we'll do it like this. Rather than return it, we'll just say valid. We'll just call the validator. If that fails, it will throw an exception. Otherwise, we assign and then we assign the alignment, and that will pass. I, th I think that's good. I think that's good. Rather than complicating the validator. The validator shouldn't know, it shouldn't also be returning things. It should just be validating things and throwing exceptions. Its job is to say, nope, and uh, kick it out. Cool. And then we can do the same thing in here in class. And then we just have the same set value thing that we're doing here in there. Validate class and alignment, except now it's going to be class. It's going to be class. Um, like that. And this dot class is going to equal 
class. And that should still pass. Let me get rid of this dead code here that's not being called. And that is a thing of beauty. That's a beaut. Wow, cool. I just spent an hour and 45 minutes refactoring code and people watched. Y'all are crazy. Um, what I'm happy with, I'm very happy with this refactor. I think it looks nice. So uh, I'm going to go through and uh, since I got about 15 minutes left on stream, I'm going to touch up a few things. Uh, I have written no tests whatsoever <laughs> tonight. <laughs> um, but uh, one of the things I did here is like in, in, a, in um, like hit points is I've got this uh, get hit points per level um, thing going on. And uh, to kind of get rid of that this dot underscore dot here underscore hero dot this, uh, you know, sort of pattern. Um, and so the, in my formulas, I can it's just a little more succinct. It's a little cleaner to read. And we kind of hide that how we extract those below. I'm going to go through and do that on all of these uh, these classes here. Um, so let's look armor class. Um, well, let's let's close a bunch of files. So let's just do close all, and we'll bring up hero. And there's a uh, ability alignment. Um, we need to say uh, get uh, class return this dot hero dot class. Then we can just say this dot class. That's slightly tighter. For armor class, we can say get dexterity modifier turn this dot underscore hero dot dexterity dot modifier yeah, well, for, the, for the ability modifiers this is looks way better there we go that still passes for attack that's not one we looked at i've already done it here let's go ahead and do the get hero Or get class, sorry. Like that. And so that makes the crit multiplier slightly cleaner. And I think I think this particular one's gonna show up a lot. Attack modifier has that need as well. Class, class, um, okay, for class, uh, it kind of just does what it does. Well, we have the alignment. Alignment, and we just call alignment up here. Just gets rid of a little bit of noise up here. Hit points. We can do the class thing again for the hit points per level. And we got hit points per level, constitution modifier level. This is all nice and nice and tidy. Uh, level and experience. Um, this would not be this dot hero dot experience points. That'd be just this dot experience points. And XP for a level is fixed. So this doesn't need any of that stuff. Uh, name is good. Yeah. Okay. So I think we're pretty good. Validator does what uh, validator validates. Yeah. Let's uh, let's commit this puppy. Cleaning up some um, helper classes. Again, I hate the word helper. It doesn't tell me anything, but 
I can't think of anything better at the moment. I'll push that up to GitHub so that if uh, anyone that's watching wants to play with this themselves or just you know review the review the code, they can. Um, yeah, yeah. See, yeah. So that was a really satisfying refactoring tonight. Um, we've got now this guy is just all delegation all the time. And so if we, let's, maybe we can clean it up a little bit by doing that. Uh, name, experience points, alignment, class. I'm, I'm grouping all the setters. I'm gonna put them down here at the bottom. So we've got the accessors, we've got the mutators, and we got the, um, the other mutators. This allows me to sort of, you know, view all the read-only properties. And then we, we change the name here. That's just that. Just trying to make this sort of visually appealing. And again, I, I, I've, I've sort of pointed out before, some developers hate this. And I, I really act personally conflicted about it. Um, oh, look, dead code. I don't need this anymore. But um, that looks tidy, doesn't it? <laughs> that sure looks tidy. Uh, so we got name, alignment, and so I'm a I'm Bob, a chaotic evil fighter. I'd be a first level. Chaotic evil fighter. So level is the thing we always care about. So level and experience points. Uh, chaotic evil fighter. These are my abilities. I've got an armor class of this, hit points of that. Uh, attack modifier. Yeah, that feels like the the order that, that would show up on your character sheet, right? Which is what I'm going for. Um, and then I got the setters down here, which is also fine. And then I'm going to do something. Slightly twinkish here. There we go. And one of the things I was, I was talking about earlier on stream was is uh, I, I kind of in some ways wish I hadn't used the getters and, and instead had used uh, something else because then I could uh, I, then I could use arrow functions for all these things. But uh, this is okay. Um, speaking of arrow functions, there we go. Let's do this. There we go. Now I'm really twinkish. Okay. I think that's probably enough for tonight. I'm pretty happy with the changes I've made. Let's make sure everything still passes here really quick. Hit enter. It does. Excellent. 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 So, okay. Get status. Get add dot. Get commit. M white space get push and um, yeah I think that's a wrap so um, I think uh, next Monday I'll be working on Evercraft Kata again uh, this Friday uh, plans are to uh, I haven't figured out what I'm working on yet it'll be something Redis um, uh, Friday afternoons is my Redis stream uh, and so uh, I'm not sure what that's going to be yet but uh, that's the plan for Friday um, I'm looking at maybe building up a bigger piece of software um, that's uh, more of a web app and making use of microservices and using Redis as plumbing for all that kind of stuff for my next stream. Uh, I may have someone uh, pairing with me on stream. I I'm hoping to get uh, one of my coworkers to pair with me. He says he's terrified of the prospect, and so I think that's a great reason to have him do it. Uh, so if you're uh, listening, Alex, you're next. Or, um did I just get your name wrong? I think I got your name wrong. Sorry, I'm kind of I'm on a new team, so <laughs> I don't have everyone's names names down. Uh, it's Andrew, uh, but there's an Alex as well. Um, but yeah, so uh, that was fun. Uh, but I am going to call it a night. So um, for everyone who uh, joined me on the stream, thank you very much. Uh, of course, uh, give me a follow if you're not following me already. Uh, those are always appreciated. Just trying to get my follower account up. Uh, by uh, b building and working on things that I, I hope are interesting. Um, and yeah. So thanks a lot, everyone. 
Have a good evening and bye.